next guest is a rule breaker and a rebel in the fashion world, and she's been one since the second grade. When eight-year-old Maya Penn found out that some of the clothing dyes could be harmful to people and the planet, she decided to do something to change it. And while other kids were solving math problems and playing sports, Maya was creating her own company to design and sell clothing using organic and recycled material. Now, by the age of 13, she had done three TED Talks, attracting the attention of world leaders like former President Barack Obama and celebrities from Samuel L. Jackson to Whoopi Goldberg, who have all worn her designs. And I am lucky enough to be wearing one right now. It is a beautiful sarong in one of my favorite colors, green. And now the inspirational rule breaker behind this, at 21, she's turned Maya Ideas into a global fashion brand. She works with businesses around the world. And she's with us now. Maya, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much for having me, Tamara. I'm so excited. And it is so surreal to see that blouse on you. You look gorgeous in it. It is gorgeous. I want to I want to talk about this design and a few that we have here on the table for your earrings, the scarf. But let's start when you discovered um, that you wanted to educate people and spread the word about the dye used in clothing and how it's detrimental to the environment and also our bodies. Absolutely. So the fashion industry has a lot of both environmental and ethical issues behind it. I really wanted to tackle what's called fast fashion, fashion that is cheaply produced, overproduced. In fact, the fashion industry produces over a billion tons of CO2 per year. And as long as what you mentioned as well, the toxic dyes and just, you know, unnatural um, materials that are used, I really wanted to make items that were eco-friendly, that are made from vintage, recycled, organic materials and create an alternative that is not only, you know, cute and, and you know, chic, but yeah. it's also better for the planet Well, I got to well. tell you, you know, once I had Moses, um, my son, I, I remember everyone said, you know, wash the baby's clothes first. And I'd gotten this shirt. I put it in cold water and the dye just covered the entire bowl. And I think so many parents watching right now are people who've worn blue jeans. You sit down, you get up, the blue is still on the chair. And you think, yeah. what does that mean? Yeah, that's the thing. I think what's really important to focus in on is recycling materials and also when you're using new materials, using non-toxic organic materials. I love to use even fruit and vegetable dyes and herbal teas to dye some of my scarves, wow. non-toxic natural earth pigments to paint um, on my scarves and various designs. And I, I really have just always been passionate about combining environmental activism right. with art and the fashion world. And you it's something so that really You are so ahead resonated. of the curve, though. You are so, because now the it thing in fashion is sustainability. Everyone, you know, it's, you go on any website, I don't care the price point, you will find a company now saying, we're all about sustainability. You were eight years old when you started preaching to the choir that is now following you. So you were breaking this rule as a kid where did you get this from? Because I need every eight-year-old, parent of an eight-year-old to lean in on this tip. What inspired it? What really inspired it was my love for the environment, for the natural world, and for wanting to preserve it and use my passion for art and design to really speak to that. I did start at a time in 2008 sustainable fashion was nowhere near a mainstream topic. Right. And, you know, it's really amazing to see how this has changed. Consumers are really speaking with their dollars yeah. and, you know, really supporting the companies that match with their values. And brands really have to listen and are now coming to me to consult them so they can figure out how to produce their items more sustainably. I mean, you're a CEO of your own company. And to your point, fast fashion brings in a lot of money to retailers, but you fought. The, the, the wave of that, and you've won because they're coming to you now asking, how do we do it better? How do we get in on this? Absolutely. I, I really have always stuck true to my beliefs, my values, as far as sustainability and ethical practices go. I never wanted to scale like a traditional fashion brand where I was just making extra inventory for no reason. I wanted to really be creative about it and figure out how can I, you know, get my items 
you know, more seen, you know, globally. My items have been sold all over the world to Australia, Japan, Gosh. Denmark, Canada, you name it. And I still don't have excess of inventory. A lot of what I make is limited edition or few of a kind or sometimes even one of a kind because I'm oftentimes reusing materials I already have not to put an extra strain on mm. the earth. And I, I really, you know, use biomimetic design, really going in nature. My favorite fashion designer, my favorite designer is Mother Nature. You know, Aww. she gives me so much inspiration. And so I think it's something that's just so crucial that every brand needs to look at how they can reduce the impact they have on people and Your the Your message is incredible. You know, I know you've also teamed up with Hulu and Adobe on this animated project. This is part of the kick the door down rebel attitude um, that's gotten you to where you are. So now you're venturing into this world as well. Yes. So animation is a passion that I've had really even before I got into fashion design. I was creating animated flipbooks at three and four years old, making short films digitally wow. when I was like seven and eight. And by the time I was 16, I was actually commissioned to animate the opening of the first ever digital report presented to Congress. And so this was to create, this was created to get an American Museum of Women's History built in Washington. We don't have a museum showcasing the uh, achievements and contributions of women in history. Well, I went to the Capitol at 16, present the animation that I made myself, and it was even presented to former President Barack Obama that, that next amazing. day. And it's been passed, that legislation's been passed through the Senate now as of this year. So that's something I'm so excited How about. How old are you again? Yeah, I am 21. <laughs> oh my God. What am I doing wrong? With my, <laughs> I mean, well, my you are one of my absolute sheroes. So oh, but listen, I, you I are my shero. It. I am just, I, my jaw is on the ground right now. All that you've accomplished is incredible. This top is beautiful. The designs, congratulations on everything. You are truly a rule breaker and a rebel who's making a difference. Goodness. Thank my, you so much. Oh, my gosh. Thank well, you. My, by the way, you can find more information on Maya's company and the design that I'm wearing. Go to Maya's line. It's at our website, TamaronHallShow.com, for all of that. Thank you so much.